Welcome to this crash course on learning how to use liquid inside braze. Now you might be here because you've never used liquid before, or you might be here because you know a little bit of liquid and you just kind of want to refresh yourself. But either way, we're going to go right back to the beginning and help you understand what liquid is, how it works, and some cool things you can do with it that are really easy to apply to anything you're doing right now. But instead of getting into all the complexities about how things work, first of all, let's just get your fingers on the keyboard and get you typing so you can see some of that power straight away and just get excited about it. Liquid is basically made up of three main parts, objects, filters, and tags. And there's a few other little things like operators that we'll get to another time. But for today, we're going to stick with objects, filters, and tags. One of the main ones being objects. And you'd be quite aware of what an object is because it's essentially what you see rendered out on the screen, such as someone's first name. Now to start any object, it's very straightforward. You just type two curly braces and you can see already Braze is offering me a list of things that thinks I might want. Now, if you want to access standard attributes, things that are saved in Braze by default, such as first name, which is very common, you type a dollar sign. I like to think of that as an S for standard, but you can think of it however you want. And you can see we have now a list, first name, last name, email address, basically any standard attribute that's saved in there. If you click on first name, it'll automatically complete the rest of that sentence for you, uh, which you can see it closes out first name with a, a curly brace, and then it closes out the entire uh, object with two curly braces on the end, because essentially it'll look like this if I break it up, because you always need to have the same number of curly braces on either end, so it's even, otherwise it won't work. Now, if I go up here and do test, I've already added a first name as an example. You'll see on this side now, Peter. So I've put Peter in as a first name, it's rendered out Peter. And say I change that to, I don't know, Troy. It'll go, oh, Troy's now the first name. I'll render out Troy. In your case, if you're using um, live data, it's actually going to be pulling out whatever the first name of that user is. Now we can add another standard attribute to that for a bit of practice. We can go two curly braces. We type in the dollar sign or the S for standard, and we might want their email address. I click that. You can see it's closed it off on either end. Now, if I go into here and test this, you now see we have Troy. Um, well, I'm going to change that back to Peter because his name's Peter now. He's not Peter Troy. And here's his email address, peter at radmail.com. It's printed out peter at radmail.com. Now you're like, okay, well, how is this useful? What can I do with this? Well, you can now put this in the middle of a sentence. You go, hello, my name is... And my blah, blah, blah my email address is i'll just get rid of this line in between so you can see now this say hello my name is and whatever their first name is and my email address is i'm just going to get rid of these spaces just to make this look nice and clean now if you render that out it should actually write that as a sentence hello my name is peter and my email address is peter at radmail.com now, where this is really powerful is Braze will actually update that term for whatever the user is. So if for some reason, the next user that gets sent an email is Sophie, it'll say, hello, my name is Sophie. And maybe it'll update her email address to, hello, my name is Sophie at radmail.com. So essentially, you can use any number of terms in here, any number of objects, I should say, in here. Um, and you can print them out in sentences however you want. Now, an interesting scenario... This is where I'm going to, an interesting scenario is where someone might have their first name, but the capital letter of their first name hasn't been updated in the database. So for instance, Peter here, he might just have P for Peter. So when we render that out, we now have, hello, my name is Peter, but there's a lowercase P on there and it just doesn't look quite right. So what you can do is you can go in here and now we can use what are called filters. Now a filter sits inside the object, inside the two curly braces on each either end. I like to put a space just to make it nice and clean. And we put the pipe icon, which is this one. It's called a pipe. It's a little vertical line on your keyboard. It's normally on the top right somewhere in a lot of cases. And after here, you can put a lot of different filters. And what filters do is they uh, play a role. They work on whatever's in this object, in this first name object. They work on that and they do something to it. In our case, Peter didn't have a capital letter, so we want to capitalize. Now, there's a whole list of these in the Braze documents, but capitalize is a really common one. And what it's going to do is it's going to go look at this first name object, whatever it's pulling in, like Sophie, Troy, Peter, go, does it have a capital letter on the first name? And if it does, it's not going to really do anything. If it doesn't, it's going to capitalize that. 
So now we're expecting this sentence over here to say, hello, my name is Peter with a capital P. Look at that. And so here it doesn't. So you might have a database that's just been pulled in from say a giant CSV file or somewhere and all the names are mismatched and some have capital letters and some don't. But using capitalize, what you can do now is actually use that filter to automatically capitalize all those names before that email gets sent out and you don't have to go into your data and fix all of that. So a filter such as that can just change everything and make everything so much more simple when you just want to send a nice, clean looking email or campaign out. Okay, now what else can we do with these filters? Well, another great filter that can be really useful is, well, I guess you could call it a filter, it's called default. So what we have here, we have hello, first name, a filter, capitalize first name, and then we can put in another pipe Hold on, we're chaining filters. This is pretty cool. And we can use what's called default. And you might be able to guess what default is, but essentially what it's doing is it's going to default to whatever we write here if there is no first name. It's going, oh, the first name field's blank. Now what do I do? Well, it's going to default to that. So in this case, we've got default. And because we are going to tell it what to do, we have to put a colon. And then we put two apostrophes talking marks, whatever you want to call these. And so this says, hello, my name is, and for this example, I'm just going to write, not here right now. <laughs> so essentially, you'd use this a lot more clever. Often you might put it at the start of a sentence and it, you might change it from Peter. You might say, hi there, friend, or hello, friend, or hi. So if I go in here now and test this, it should go, hey, there is a first name, Peter, so I'm going to write Peter, but we put that if there is no first name, default to not here right now. So if I go down and delete Peter from this box, it should go, hold on, there is no first name. Hello, my name is not here right now. So that would essentially be whatever you want it to default to. So I'm going to put Peter back and show you a good example that you might be able to use. You can go, I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to put hi there and i'm going to put a comma at the end um here oh, i'll put a little little lowercase on there here is your update so i've put it at the start of the sentence now so if i test that peter here is your update and so hold on it's going to go through the oh actually i'll put a lowercase p on there just to make sure that works oh look we still have peter here now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of Peter and we'd be expecting them to go, hold on, there's no first name. I'm going to use the default. Hi there. Here is your update. Liquid. It's magic. Seriously. So now what happens is you've got a phrase set up as an introduction to an email or campaign. And this phrase will go, is there a first name? Yes. Does it have a capital letter? No. Well, I'll capitalize it. Here's your update. Or it might go, is there a first name? Does it have a capital letter? Yeah, that's fine. Moves on. Or it might go, is there a first name? No. What do I do now? I'm going to default to hi there. And that gives you a fallback, a very simple fallback. You might have a million users in your database and it's always going to have capitalized their first name and have a fallback term just in case there's no first name there. You can't tell me that's not cool. So look at that, in that short period of time, you've gone from basically no liquid to knowing how to put a first name into a campaign or a message. And you can make that any standard attribute you want that's in that list. Um, you've capitalized the first name if it doesn't have a capital letter already with a filter, with a capitalized filter. And then you've added another filter as a fallback to say, if there is no first name, put this instead. Like how cool is that? And just one line, so essentially one line of code. And at this point you're programming. If you weren't a programmer before, congratulations, boom. Now, what I'm going to show you now is the final part of this, which is known as tags. And tags are essentially what I like to call liquid logic. It's lines of a liquid that tell um, Braze what to do under certain conditions and in what order. Check it out. Okay, so we're back here and we've got your first name, standard attribute, capitalizing it. And we're saying, here is your update. I'll put the comma back. And if I test that, we can see that's working. Peter, here's your update because Peter's written in there. Now, I've removed the default and the fallback because we're going to use tags, which I like to call liquid logic, 
to do essentially the same thing, but because we're using liquid logic, we can make it do extra things. So here's an example. Let's go curly brace percentage sign, percentage sign curly brace. I like to close that off when I start it. And the percentage sign lets Braze know that you're about to use some logic. This doesn't get rendered out anywhere. Uh, this just lets it know what order to do things in. So we're gonna put in here, if. So we're going, if this happens, do this. So we're gonna put two curly braces, oh, two curly braces and dollar sign. Uh, because we're going to pick first name. So we're putting an object in there, but the object doesn't get printed. It's just going, if there is a value inside this object, if there is a first name, then I want you to do whatever's after that. Now, you also have to close off. Anytime you do an if, you've always got to close it off with an end if. So it always goes right at the end. So this essentially won't do anything different. Now, if there's a first name, print the first name with the capitalized first letter, we wouldn't expect it to be any different. But then what we can do, we can do curly brace percentage sign, percentage sign curly brace to close it off and write else. So now we're saying, if there's a first name, do this, else do something else. Oh no, there is no first name. Ah. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna put in there. I'll put a comma there, punctuation is important. So essentially what it's doing now, it's gonna go, if there's a first name, write the first name with a capital letter, here is your update. Else, oh no, there is no first name, ah. So I test that, it's what we expect. Now, if I go in and I just pick, select existing user that says no first name, because there's nothing in there at all, it goes, oh no, there is no first name, ah. But then if I go back to where Peter was saved, it goes back to Peter. Now, where this gets really cool is we can go, if first name, and then on the end of this, I could type two equals sign. Now that's saying we, if the first name equals something. Now in this case, we want it to equal Peter. If the first name equals Peter, write their first name. Here is your update. Or we could do if the first name, and then we could do else if. Now notice here, else if there's no E after that. So that's important. But what we can do now is go, if it's not Peter, we can get it to do something else. So if two curly braces, dollar sign, so we want first name again. If first name equals Sophie, then maybe we also want it to write out the first name. Here's your update. We'll just do, maybe here is your final update. Or if it's there's still no first name saved in there at all, it'll go, oh no, no first name. So we'll test that have a look. Peter, here is your update. So now if I type Sophie, it should know that's a diff. Sophie, here is your final update. And because a little bit of a bug in here, I have to just go to select existing Yuga. Oh no, there is no first name because there's no name in there. But if I go back to Sophie, here is your final update. If I go to type in Peter, here is your update. So now depending on the first name that's put in, it can do a variation of sentences to know um, to depending on what the logic is. And this logic could just go on. You can type, you could literally type else if and just type pages and pages of whatever you want. And there's other simpler ways to do this, but this works totally fine. And if it, if it ain't broken, you're learning, then just roll with it. Now, the reason we have this else statement, it's almost like the fallback now. So it's kind of going, if first name equals Peter, do this. Else if first name equals Sophie, do this else it's just kind of a fallback of like if none of that is true or none of that works have something to go back to now where this can be actually really handy for a lot of people is they actually want to localize some of the content by languages and in these cases you can actually use the language saved in braze as a standard attribute um, to localize the sentence that comes next after that and this is where this can get pretty fun Okay, so now in order to localize languages, what we're going to do is we're going to work with the Braze standard attribute language because uh, it's automatically saved in there. Now we want some logic here. So it goes, which country, uh, which language, sorry, do they speak in order to know what to render out? So we start with a curly brace and a percentage sign because we want some of this tag logic, liquid logic, percentage sign curly brace. It's always good to close that off. And we go if, so if uh, we're going to put two curly braces because we want a new object, dollar sign, go down to language. If their language equals, I'm going to put ES. ES is the abbreviation for Spanish in here. So if the language is Spanish, we are going to render out 
and hopefully AI hasn't ruined me because I don't speak all these languages, we're going to render Hola Mundo. And then we can say, we're going to put in Sensine Curly Brace, Sensine Curly Brace to close it up. Else if, now remember else if has no E in the middle, it's E-L-S-I-F. Else if, it's not Spanish, but else if, we're going to go the language standard attribute again, if their language equals PT, which is for Portuguese, we want you to render out this instead, Hola Mundo. But then, you know how I was saying before about having an else, a fallback statement? In the case of the work I do, and it might be different depending on what region you're in, I'm going to make the fallback English. So we go else, make it say, hello world. And then, as I mentioned before, we always need to end any if statement we open. You basically need to end any statement you open with the same amount of curly braces. So this is saying if the language saved in the standard attribute of braze, or is known as ES or Spanish, right? Hola mundo. Else if the language equals Portuguese, hola mundo. Else if it's not Spanish or Portuguese, fall back to what is the English. Now, essentially this is saying else language equals EN, but just by writing else, it knows if it's none of the others, just do this instead. And then end if. So if I run this now, so it says hello world because Peter's language is currently saved in here as EN as English. If I change that to ES though, look at that, boom. Now suddenly Peter is speaking Spanish. If I put PT, boom, Portuguese. But then if for some reason there's just no language at all or it's not Spanish or Portuguese, let's say I just empty this out, it defaults back to hello world. So again, it's like having one of these fallbacks like we were using with first name. And once again, what's cool about this is you can have an entire list of languages here from lots of different countries. So you can localize very simply with liquid and you can put all that, for instance, in, you can take all this and even though it's a little harder to so see, you can shove that in the heading block and it looks crazy and it's in capitals. But then if I go and test this, there you go. Now you've got the same level, the same level of localization happening in your subject, in your subject block. Oop, we'll go ES. Boom, in the heading. So even though some of the some of this liquid looks a little bit longer and looks like it doesn't fit in blocks like the heading, you can use this liquid anywhere to do essentially the same things. And language localization is a great example of this. Um, on that note though, anytime now that you know how to use objects, such as standard attributes, you know, language, first name, last name, email, anything that's in Braze, you know how to use filters to capitalize or fall back to a default. But now that you know how to use if, else if, and if, and if, sorry, and else, you can do a huge array of things. You could probably think of it in your head. Like if I had, you know, multiple first names or I wanted to send different sentences to people with different first names or different email addresses or different countries, all I need to do is use this if, else if else uh, logic through these tags and you can essentially do that now you know and even though there's ways to simplify this as you get more advanced with liquid this works it's quite foolproof doing it this way and you can see exactly the steps that are happening so i would suggest that you just try a few different things with this try putting all sorts of things in this you can even put um, when you get a bit more, bit more fancy, you put things like image links in here. So you can have different images appearing depending on what people's, you know, names or other attributes that are saved in the system. There's lots of clever things you can do in here. Now, feel free to put uh, any feedback or questions or comments down the bottom. Happy to answer them. Happy to try and make videos to answer things that you guys want to understand. Be sure to give me a like and subscribe and tick that little bell so you get more videos like this. And I look forward to seeing you with some more liquid lessons for Braze here in the future. Peace out for now.